We'll get into that definitely uh, a little bit later. But, Alan, in terms of this result and the performance tonight, that will really disappoint Scott Parker, especially that first half. Yeah, but they've, they've not gone down because of tonight. No. It's been, it's been the season, hasn't it? You know, and they've, not, they've got it wrong at both ends. You know, when you come up into the Premier League, you know, you know it's going to be difficult. You've got to be strong defensively, but you've got to have some attacking ability and you've got to be able to score some goals. And they've lacked in both departments. And I said before the game, for me tonight, if you're just building up for tonight, mm -hmm. that's still be in the game by half time to give themselves a chance. Yeah. They wasn't. The game was over at half time. And I think the only reason they got back into the game was because Burnley allowed them because mm. they dropped off. They weren't sure what to do, really, were yeah, they? They, yeah. they dropped off and soaked up the pressure. They may have got back in it, Fulham, but would that have been enough? They've not gone down because of tonight. No. They've gone down because of the season. Yeah. I, I just think it, it, oh, Scott would have learnt loads from this season. I mean, he was under huge pressure last year to get him up, and you could see the emotions on that playoff final. This year, they started off defensively very, very poor. A lot of turnaround, a lot of change in personnel within the team that started the season to, to now. But I think in time, it was a bit naive. You know, mm. Even this evening, they're trying to play their way out and get into the Burnley team. And then when they've gone that sort of direct route, you know, really, did they get on the first contact? Did they get on the second contact? You've got to know how to play certain teams. Um, and, yeah, it, but listen, it's not just tonight. It's the whole, mm. the whole season. Do you agree with that? Were they naive? That's a strong statement. Yeah. I, I question that half the team's on loan. Yeah. I question that. I'm not saying that... The lone players come in and don't give everything. But I do question that, that policy. And that's obviously what was decided once they went up, that mm. perhaps they was going to keep X amount of money in the bank for this. Mm. You know, that if they do go down, they'll be strong enough next year to come back up. We're noticing a bit of a trend. You know, the teams that, two teams that have come straight back up got relegated last year. So the teams going down from the Premier League yeah. are looking that much stronger than the Championship. You know, and, uh, you know, that, that was their... Policy, if you like, uh, but I can't see um, you know Scotty Parker now uh, with six or seven them players on loan. They're going to have to have a massive clear out mm. and, and bring players in ready for the championship. You know, so are they? Is it going to be Scott's job? I'm sure it's going to be, um, and he's got to start thinking about that now if he's not already thought about it. The, lo the loan one's hard, Al, because you've obviously been in that situation as a manager. But the, the loans that he's brought in are players that come in with a point to prove. Look at Loftus-Cheek, you know, coming out of Chelsea, um, coming into an England camp, hopefully, that Scott would have put him in on a platform. Lookman as well. Mm. Everton didn't work out. Leipzig, you know, so players that are there, he's given a platform mm. and they've not really taken it with both hands. So it's, it's give or take when you're a lone player. You go in there and I, I can't fault the commitment of them. It's right. just I don't think they've performed to their individual abilities. But then people like the captain Anderson, yeah. who's on loan, the goalkeeper Ariola as That's well. Right. They're two players who have probably been to a Fulham's best players this season, yeah. haven't they? Exactly, yeah. Ariola's been super. I mean, he, he made save after save throughout the season. Anderson took the armband on, uh, led from example. Uh, Harrison Reed, who's injured tonight, he's probably mm -hmm. been Fulham's best player. Doggy displays week in, week out. And where they've lacked is that creativity, which they flourished last season in the Championship. But this year just goes to show the levels from the Premier League to the Championship because not only have they not created enough chances this season, they've, they've not scored nowhere near enough. No. OK, confirmation then of the results from match week 35 in the Premier League so far. Of course, a defeat this evening for Fulham, 2-0 at home to Burnley, confirming their relegation to the Championship. We thought that we may be able to confirm the Premier League title for this season this weekend as well, but Manchester City losing at home to Chelsea on Saturday and then Manchester United beating Aston Villa on Sunday means that the wait goes on for Manchester City. But there was another decisive result, that 3-1 victory for Arsenal over West Brom, also confirming relegation for West Bromwich Albion down to the Championship for next season. So this is how the Premier League table is shaping up. And as you can see, confirmation there of the relegation for Fulham. The gap stands at 10 points with just three games left to play and their relegation has been confirmed. Burnley climbing up to 14th position with those three points this evening and confirming their Premier League status for next season in the process as well. This is the picture at the top then, as we say, Manchester City's weight for the Premier League title goes on. Manchester United take on Leicester and Liverpool this week, defeating those matches 
either of those matches would confirm the title for City. And of course, they also have the opportunity to confirm it themselves when they take on Newcastle on Friday night too. But for the moment, the focus chances, but when you, you can create as many chances as you want, but if the ball's not going to go in the net after a period of games as well, then it becomes tough. I think, I think it's interesting because just saw Mitrovic there, who Scott brought back tonight, who obviously was the major player in winning a promotion. Yeah. He's two years on now. So they're going back into the championship. Is he going to be the same player? The decisions like that you've got to, as a manager, you've got to make. Mm. Is he going to set the world alight like he did two years ago? Mm. You know, so, so there's loads of things that are going to be going on in, in Scott's mind and etc. But as Steve said, you know, the championship is not an easy place. Um, but I've seen this season with the parachute money, the clubs who got relegated, making a real fist of it. Two have come straight back up. Bournemouth are in the playoffs. Yeah. So if they spend that parachute money wisely and bring the right uh, player, the right feel for the championship, there's no reason why Fulham can't come back. No, certainly a big task ahead once again for Fulham next season to get back into the Premier League. But for the moment, let's get some reaction on their relegation from the manager, Scott Parker. Um, Scott, commiserations. This moment's been looming a little bit, but now that the relegation is here, what's your overriding emotion? Look, it has been looming and I think we've been... Um... We've been in and around this situation for for a little while now, but that don't that, that, that don't hide the fact of the disappointment, hurt, and sadness I feel tonight because obviously it's um, it's inevitable now. And so yeah, look, I'm I'm gutted. Um, this year at times, as while we've had some big improvements, while we've um, pushed on in certain elements, the facts are we're relegated because we've fallen short. We've fallen short at this level. Um, at a Premier League level and we've not been quite good enough and, and while there has been some positives of course there are the facts are that we've, we've not managed to watch our goal was to stay in the league and we knew how difficult it would be we knew the challenge ahead um, but ultimately yeah we've fallen a little bit short I know you said that you wanted your side to be brave tonight mm. do you feel you saw that that you got that I've always had that I have honestly always had that uh, I think probably in a in Really, tonight is probably a riding factor of how our season's gone at times. And between the two boxes, we did very well tonight. And the difference was, you know, defensively, the two goals were poor. And then the final moment where you need to score, you need to make good decisions and you need the detail of certain passes, we, we, we didn't have that. And probably when I look back over the course of this season, that's probably been the big difference, really. So um, effort, endeavour... Um, I've had in abundance from, from day one. What, what we've probably lacked a little bit is our quality in certain moments. I saw you embracing a couple of the players there. What's been the message to them at full time? Yes, yeah, just the effort. I, I understand that. You know, the players need to understand as well what, what you need to bring at this level. And while, like I said, there's an effort, there's an endeavour, you need more to survive in this level. And um, this level is... is is brutal and the key details and the tiny details is is key really and that's what we need to that's what we need to to work on what's your priority now with these last few games what do you need from these players what do you want to see hey, look I think at this present moment in time I have nothing but um, um, sadness really I you know I have one fault which was at the start of this season for us to try and be successful and survive not managed to do that I think ultimately I think now and the coming days, um, just have a long, hard think, regroup a little bit, and we've got three games to go. And it, my, my job is to, to obviously um, to make sure that these three games end in, you know, in the right way. Just finally, you've been there before and bounced back. How mm. important is it to you that you're given the chance to do that again? Yeah, look, it's, of course it's important. It's important now. A club, football club needs to make big decisions. And we've had a relegation, we've had a promotion, and we've had a relegation. And um, the roller coaster of that and uh, the highs and lows and is not is not something you know you want and ultimately now during these moments we need to make good decisions a football club we need to work out exactly what we, where we want to go what we need to do and um, like everything during moments of relegation that's the key now the key is we failed this year and we've not been successful what's going to be vitally important we sit down and work out why work out where we went wrong and work out what we need to do as a football club to to to, to make sure that 
that we can get a bit of consistency. All right, we'll leave it there. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Commiserate. Thank you. A lack of quality then, according to Scott Parker, uh, to blame really for their relegation from the Premier League. Did he sound like a manager questioning his future to you, Steve, or not? No, no, not at all. Uh, I think what you get from Scott is always going to be honest, an always honest reflection. Um, and it kind of summed up there by him saying, between the two boxes, we was, we was good. But ultimately, if you don't defend well and you can't score, then... It's not going to work out. So it, they need to reflect. Obviously, there's going to be a lot, a lot of big decisions to come, like Scott's just said, and it's, it's making the right ones. Well, look, I've, I've known Scott since he was 12, you know, when I had him at Charlton. Uh, played, obviously, for me a lot of games, and I signed him at West Ham uh, when I went there. And if he's anything like the player, if the manager's anything like the player, he'll be thinking now, what can I do to, be, to get the club back? To where he wants them to be. Already? Yeah, because yeah. that's how he was as a player. He finished the game and he wondered why it ain't worked out and wondered why the other guy got better with him and he didn't want to know what he's got to do to, to win the next battle. And that's the way he was talking. I think he's now thinking, I can't let this season end in a 4 0 and a 5 0 and a 6 0 because no. that's the last thing you want as a manager. So he's thinking about that now. But in between, he's obviously got to have his mind on what. The, the, the situation, what the policy is going to be yeah. for next season. He's going to have loads of discussions with the owners and, and, and staff, but his main priority is not to let this season finish because that would be really hurtful. And I don't think it's going to do him any favours if they go and get a four and a five and a six defeat. So that's what he's on his mind now. OK, no doubt a bad night for Fulham at Craven Cottage, but a brilliant night for Burnley. Let's hear from their manager, Sean Dyche, after their Premier League status for next season was confirmed. Uh, Sean, another season in the Premier League awaits. How much credit do you give your players for getting the job done tonight? Yeah, a lot of awkward game for obvious reasons. You know, they're fighting for everything. They change their style, put the ball forward a lot longer, a lot earlier in the game. Uh, we dealt with that, and then we scored two really good goals for different reasons. And then second half's an ugly one, but you expect them to give everything. You expect them to throw bodies forward, and I thought we defended very well. In keeping with recent performances, was your team full of threat this evening? Well, I thought it was a threat. You know, I don't think we're full of threat, but, you know, that's part of the challenge of us being us, you know, trying to unlock ourselves enough to attack and to uh, cause the opposition trouble whilst defending well. And, you know, you mentioned earlier in the, uh, before the game, you know, we had two points after seven games. So that's a, a really big achievement to get to three to go. And we just secured another season in the Premier League. So these players have a lot of credit. And it'll be your sixth season in a row when you see so many teams are just sort of bouncing up and down. How big, a, how big an achievement is that? Yeah, it is. You know, we, we've had a lot of challenges. This year has been my most challenge as a manager off the pitch with the sale of the club. Um, a long-winded sale. Um, not a lot of uh, finance put into the club while that process was going on. And the players deserve massive credit on my staff, you know, because it, you've got to work through all them challenges off the pitch and make sure the team is still motivated on it. And we, we never lack motivation, to be fair. So how hard was that, that early part of the season and two points from seven games? How worried were you? Yeah, very, very difficult. I don't, I don't really worry too much. You know, there's a lot more in life going on than football. Um, but I think that, you know, you try and find a balance to your own emotions. And I think at the beginning of the season, I knew the challenges. I knew the, the small spot we've got. I knew the injuries we were having. I didn't expect them to carry on, I must say, but they have done, unfortunately. So that's been a big challenge all season. No, but it's been, it's been a big shift from the players. It's come from, well, I say, it's a, it's a pretty big achievement, three to go, to get this many points when you've only got two after seven. Matter of fact, as always, from Sean Dyche at Burnley. Alan, how much credit does he deserve for oh. doing this again? With no money, like he was keen to point out there. I said it. Before the game, I think they took uh, a free transfer in and spent... Free, and as, as Steve said, they've not been too shy over the years to, to change their manager. But I think that what he's done... And he obviously, as I said earlier, he obviously agreed to the, the policy at the start of this season yeah. about you know the way they were going to go, loan deals as opposed to permanent signings. So, yeah, quite rightly so. Let him give, give him the opportunity to go again. OK, let's get the first reaction then from the Fulham squad after their relegation was confirmed with that defeat to Burnley. Let's hear now from Alexander Mitrovic. Alexander, horrible time to do an interview, I get that, but how much is this hurting the Fulham players? Yeah, uh, tough time, but uh, yeah, we, we failed today, we failed this season and uh, uh, hard to find the words, you know, after, after performance after the season is if not the good it wasn't good enough uh, we didn't deserve it and you know um, I play football 
long enough to know that uh, football is really honest game. Sometimes you get it during the season, sometimes you're not. But uh, yeah, on the end, you always finish where you deserve to be. Yeah, we didn't deserve to to stay up this season, and yeah, everything we we show this season was not uh, enough to stay up. So yeah, it was good on time, but yeah, overall um, we finish where where we deserve to be. So it's really sad. I'm really sad. We're really sad for the fans, for the for the people in the club. You know, it's it's it's. It's really tough, tough to find the world. Do you feel like tonight, on a big night for you, I think you just used the word failed, do you feel like you fell short when you needed a really big performance? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, we felt tonight we we didn't show the show the, the big characters, big mentalities, and uh, I think we, we cracked under the pressure a little bit, and uh, yeah, we just couldn't do it. We were not... Uh, Good enough, brave enough. You can say whatever you want, you know. But we, we were not good enough, you know. We we try, we fight, we we work hard, but yeah, you know, we miss the quality a little bit on the on the both ends, uh, uh, defensively and offensively as well. So yeah, and uh, in the league like this, you you get punished, and we got punished today and uh, this season. How challenging a season has it been personally for you? Yeah, for I think not just for me, for 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 everyone, it's been a challenging, it's been a tough season on a personal level for for myself. And yeah, there is a, a, I'm gonna leave it here. You know, it's it's happened a lot of things, and yeah, but that's football, that's life, and uh, we keep pushing, keep going, and yeah. Uh, we uh, we have to finish these three games and uh, and to see what's going to happen next. Okay. Thanks for your time. Just, you're welcome. Yeah, a very honest interview there from Alexander Mitrovic. Alan, I guess he said what he needed to say, but there was a, a sincerity to his words. Yeah, he was, he was very honest. He was saying that uh, they haven't been good enough all season. And when it came to it tonight, they cracked under the pressure. As I said earlier, I think they left it all in the dressing room. The first... First half, mm. they never showed up. And, you know, you, the build-up towards the game, we must win this, we must win. And they've come out and gone flat. And Burnley took full advantage. And there was, there was an opportunity in the second